Hey, family, come on in the room, come on in the room. This is Pastor Carolyn, your pastor and purpose pusher of Tears to Breakthrough Ministries and T2B Global. And I am so, 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 so excited. Um, we just wrapped up another session roundtable discussion um, for our Queendom Purpose Academy. And for those of you who don't know, my Queendom Purpose Academy is my mentorship program. And basically we are queens in the kingdom of God. And so we move differently in this world. What does that mean? That means that we're not moved by the systems of this world and we don't get caught up in all the stuff, right? Uh, we love men. We're not anti-men. We are not anti-marriage. Um, we love on our men. Listen, because you know, there's a lot of things going on out there. <laughs> um, a lot of movements and you no, know, we're not about that life, okay? So we um, have been through some trauma, okay? Most of my ministry is women starting over after trauma, after abort, after um, abuse, divorce, um, all the things. Um, yeah, and I almost said abortion. Yeah, that's, that, that's possible too. Um, but the thing is, we, 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 we have overcome those things. We have healed our, our healing from those past traumas. So we're not living in the past. We are living our best and blessed life now. We are kingdom minded, okay? We are queens in the kingdom of God. And so we understand that we are royalty. We understand that we are valued and valuable. And yes, for those of you who want to be married, we are worthy to be found. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. So you know you're a good thing, worthy to be found. You have positioned yourself to be found, okay? And um, listen, and what we're not doing in this season in our life um, or we're not doing it we're not putting up with the crap we're not putting up with toxic relationships we're no longer putting up with any type of abuse or misuse we know how to set boundaries all of the things okay and so what we've been talking about um the roundtable discussions are uh, and the mentor um ship is surrounded by my courses and again one of the courses is so you say you want to be married what we're talking about now is the sexless marriage, okay? Yeah, the sexless marriage. How many of you can relate to that, right? So there are so many reasons why a marriage would be sexless. Sometimes because the man is just not acting right. He's stepping outside of the marriage, right? And you know it. And so mm, you, you have totally cut it off, okay? Um, cut the sex off. You know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> um, but also because there could be a medical issue. So it could be, you could be suffering from fibroids. It could be um, before pregnancy, during pregnancy, after pregnancy, some issues, right? Or discomfort. It can be so many things. It can be like me, menopause. Oh my goodness, when I felt the whole menopause thing, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Sex was like, having glass broken glass on the inside of me like cutting me up it was horrible um but what we do ladies is and this is what we talk about we find solutions we don't just continue with the, with the issues and not dealing with the issues because one uh woman said to me well i don't feel comfortable with talking to my husband about that how could you not feel comfortable with talking to your husband about sex and how you feel ladies we have not that's what the bible says because we ask not ask for what you want if you need um for whatever reason to not have sex in this season if you need to, you have to have that discussion with your husband because he needs to be aware of why this is happening and you might want to invite him to your doctor's office with you to have this the discussion with your doctor so you can come up with solutions right you have to make him a part of what's going on you have to open up your mouth and speak and be your best advocate. Um, but your goal is to keep your marriage healthy, right? So we're not going to, this is not 1920, 29, where we keep our mouth shut. No, we open up our mouth and we speak and we talk and we, we articulate what we want. You might need some different positions or try some new things. Like open up your mouth and ask for what you want. You have not because you ask not. So there's that. But then also, um, I want to talk to you about a little bit about rejection, because what we don't always think about, ladies, is how, uh, for whatever the reason is that you're, that it's a sexless marriage, is how the man feels rejection. 
And what we don't want is for our man to feel rejected by us. Because when we, when the man feels rejected, now you have opened that door for other issues, for him to step outside the marriage. Now, I'm not saying that's an excuse for him stepping outside the marriage, because again, communication is key. Whatever the problem is, it should be communicated between the two of you, and then there should be a solution. If counseling is needed, get counseling, whatever it takes. So, but however, I have heard men say that I stepped outside the marriage because I wasn't getting none at home. Okay. So when you, when a man feels rejected, he may step outside the home. He may start interacting with prostitutes or let's just keep it real. Okay. I keep it real and raw. Okay. Strip clubs or whatever, um, or a side piece. Okay. So we don't want that. We don't want our man out in the streets. Okay. Cause the streets are wicked. Okay. <laughs> we want him home with us. Okay. And we're meeting each other's needs. Okay. Cause we both had, had needs, right? And so what I want you to do is, first of all, register for our next session, okay? Because um, we have open, honest, rough, listen, conversation, and we, we talk about everything, okay? We talk about everything, okay? So click on my um, link tree and go ahead and register for the roundtable discussion um, if you want to be actually in the academy then you can go ahead and do this so you say you want to be married but you can actually join a round table discussion without actually being a part of the academy but that's a whole, for a whole nother um time to discuss that but you reach out to me and we can have that that conversation but um yeah but what i want you to do is listen to this um listen to this from a male perspective so i have some snippets of uh, Preston Perry, Jack, Jackie Perry, Preston and Jackie Perry. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Powerful couple. And how he's, he's, he's doing this interview in this podcast and he's talking about sexless marriage and how the male feels from a male perspective when a man feels rejected. Ladies, we can't be rejecting our man. We, we, don't, don't reject that man. Don't reject that man. So put some nice soft music on and have that conversation and the two of you can come up with a solution together. I'll see you on the inside. But meanwhile, check out the snippets. It's powerful from a male's perspective. Check it out. I treated women just like bodies mm. and not and not something precious to be held. Mm. Uh, and so God really had to just correct a lot of stuff early on. Um, and not only that, I, came, I was married to a woman who came out of the lifestyle who didn't like men and who saw men abuse women her mm -hmm. whole life, right? Mm -hmm. Which is one of the things that kind of drove her into homosexuality in the, in the first place. Or, or, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for us to get our fix. Mm. But also, if you're a real man, a woman should always desire you, mm. right? And so I think this is the reason why you know, I started a series in my apartment a um, long time ago called War on Lust. And the married men that came um, to my War on Lust meetings struggled with porn almost more than the single men. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why is that? It's because I think the church doesn't do a good job of letting us know that when you get when you have, when you when you get married, your wife is not always going to be available for you. But mm -hmm. what does the culture teach us? Mm -hmm. The culture teaches us that you know that if you are real man that a woman should always want you yep. and so this is the reason why we run the porn right mm -hmm. it's because we can vicariously live through men who are not being rejected mm. that's deep right yeah that's right. deep wow we don't we don't we don't you know, we it, it, and so and, and and this is the reason why we have to understand that pornography is not just some lust fix but it is a deep emotional fix even if you haven't realized it yet right, 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 it right. is it is it is a deep desire to be to be wanted mm -hmm. and longed for mm -hmm. right and so the problem with pornography it's just a it's just a perverted version mm -hmm. of intimacy mm -hmm. and longing right? Right, right uh and it's not it's, it's not rooted in like it's not real right. you know what i'm saying right, and right, so right. like yeah like for me i i had to identify that in myself as like the reason why i ran to porn is because i i wasn't prepared to deal with rejection mm. not only that like it's more than just a woman being pregnant or a woman developing you know a body a, a baby in her body and all of that it's sometimes you might uh, marry a woman who have went through sexual trauma mm -hmm. 
and she might be okay for the first three years. Mm -hmm. But it's a real thing called triggers. Mm -hmm. And something might trigger her one day where she's not going to be as sexually active, you know? Our bodies change, Mm -hmm. right? And so, like, the church has to do a better job of teaching men that when you get married, you're not going to just come into Mary smashing your wife every every day. It's just not realistic. Uh, And the Bible even talks about you know, abstaining from sex for a season, mm-hmm. you know, when it's agreed upon, by when, it's both, agree, when it's agreed upon, when it's agreed upon <laughs> yeah. you know, like I, I wouldn't recommend any woman like, I'm just not giving you, you know what I'm saying? Right. Because the Bible says, don't even do it too long right. unless you give the devil a foothold. Right. 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 And so you don't want your husband to start, you know, believing lies about you and how you love him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's like, no, even if we have to, like, we've done that in our marriage, we say, okay, let's not have sex for a season. Mm-hmm. But we're working towards intimacy in other ways. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when we do come together, it is not a duty for you mm-hmm. or payday for me, mm-hmm. right? But it is it's, it's intimacy. And so mm-hmm. I think it's healthy. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's this tension of there's a lot of men in sexless marriages, but then there's a lot of men who don't know how to be sexless and mm-hmm. not defined by it. Yeah. And, and the reality of the need for intimacy. For both parties, yeah, right, and 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 genuinely wanting to serve each other, yeah, that's what it should be, right. Yeah. So I think it's this, it's this interesting tension that that we're wrestling with, and it, it, people are talking past each other. And and the reality is, you can read all the books, you can go to all the conferences. Some of this is going to take work. Uh-huh. It's going to take work. It's going to be take you being in community with people that can speak into you and, and the consistency of that. And I think, I think you're right. I don't think we properly equip men for for yeah. the realities of that. Thanks. What do you make of?